Hello, everyone. Welcome to the China Brief. We bring you the latest global media coverage on China's current affairs, economy, and society, as well as exclusive analysis. Our trustworthy, professional, and multi-perspective China reporting provides judgment and decision-making references for the world's elites. The China Brief is issued in multiple languages, including text, video, podcasts, and books, and is broadcasted 24/7 in the six-degree world. Shanghai Municipal Standing Committee met overnight. Chen Jining urgently informed Dong Yunhu problem: purify the circle of life. Shanghai Municipal Committee Standing Committee met overnight. Chen Jining emergency briefing on the issue of Dong Yunhu purifying the circle of life. Dong Yunhu involved in the TV station's mistress and in Yong what relationship? Rumors of Qin Gang have surfaced. After the fall of Dong Yunhu, director of the Shanghai Municipal People's Congress Standing Committee, on Wednesday, July 12, the Standing Committee of the Shanghai Municipal Committee of the Communist Party of China (CPC) held a meeting overnight to indicate that it resolutely supports the decision of the CPC Central Committee and resolutely unites its thoughts and actions to the spirit of the Central Committee's decision. The meeting also asked leading cadres to consciously purify their circle of friends, social circle and circle of life. According to the Shanghai Municipal Government Information Office's microsignal, Shanghai Releases, the Standing Committee of the Municipal Party Committee held a meeting on Wednesday night to convey the Central Committee's decision to conduct a disciplinary review and a supervision investigation of Dong Yunhu for suspected serious disciplinary violations. Municipal Party Secretary Chen Jining presided over the meeting and delivered a speech. The meeting emphasized that the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection and the State Supervisory Commission's disciplinary review and supervision investigation of Dong Yunhu on suspicion of serious disciplinary violations fully embodies the CPC's distinctive attitude of zero tolerance for corruption. We should learn a lesson from this and persistently promote the development of comprehensive and strict governance of the party to the depths and effectively achieve the anti-corruption and prevention of alarm bells ringing and anti-corruption and advocate unremittingly. The meeting pointed out that leading cadres at all levels should be strict in cultivating themselves, using power and disciplining themselves. To consciously purify their circle of friends, social circle, circle of life, always self-respect and self-examination, self-examination and self-policing and self-encouragement, to be prudent and prudent and prudent and prudent friends. Effectively fulfill the political responsibility of the party, strict education, management, supervision of cadres, strict control of family members, relatives, staff around. Dong Yunhu is the biggest tiger hit since the 20th CPC National Congress and a rare full ministerial level official to fall from office in Shanghai over the years. It is understood that he was taken away by the Discipline Inspection Department on Tuesday, 11th. The Jifang Daily, published on the same day, also reported news that he went to the Shanghai Academy of Social Sciences on July 10 to conduct research and hold talks with experts and scholars. Wall Street TV's Hot in Depth program exclusively analyzed Dong Yunhu's case, discussing whether it was Chen Jining's purge of the Zhejiang Gang, and whether it had anything to do with the fact that Supreme Prosecutor General Ling Yong is also a Zhejiang Xianzhu hometown. That Dong Yunhu is what the problem, the official did not announce, many rumors in the community a lot, most of them are related to the female anchor of Shanghai TV. Because Dong Yunhu has been in charge of the Shanghai publicity system. China's biggest den of prostitution is the CCTV, Shanghai is considered to be the second biggest. Shanghai has recently produced a few very flamboyant ones involved in high-level relations, one is Dong Qing and the other is Ouyang Shedon, both of whom climbed up to the CCTV from the local stations in Shanghai and have certain relations with Sun Lijun and other powerful people. Now Liu Yibing is back in the spotlight. See Wall Street TV channel for details. In addition, China's foreign minister Qin Gang has disappeared from public events, 
generally thought to be suffering from a contracted illness. However, in the last few days, rumors have begun to circulate on the internet that Chin Gang is involved in a mistress, and the Spiegel TV channel is following up on the matter. This is China Briefing. China's local government bond duration cut to minimum levels as risks loom, no panic in markets. Bloomberg reports that investors in China's local government financing platforms, LGFVs, are becoming more cautious, demanding higher returns and shorter maturities. In H1 2023, the average maturity of onshore LGFV bond issues fell to 2.51 years, the shortest on record, while the average coupon of LGFV RMB bonds rose to 4.39%. This growing caution reflects concerns about the looming refinancing challenge for a sector that is considered China's biggest financial stability risk. If provinces can't refinance at favorable rates, they may be forced to cut back on spending, which could further slow China's already struggling economy. In addition, any missed payments could lead to a rapid repricing of credit and a surge in borrowing costs to unsustainable levels. The financing environment is particularly challenging for weaker regions such as Qinghai and Tianjin, which face higher financing costs and have to borrow on shorter terms. These regions have found it difficult to issue long-term bonds, making their refinancing capacity even more vulnerable. Most of China's local governments are facing a severe funding crunch, with the collapse in real estate leading to a reduction in land transfer revenues and an increase in public spending during the epidemic. While no local government financing platform has yet defaulted on public bonds, half of China's cities had trouble managing interest payments on their debt last year. The fundamental problem is that most of the infrastructure projects built by LGFVs do not generate enough capital to service the debt, and instead rely on cash injections and refinancing from local governments to stay afloat. Although LGFV bonds are categorized as corporate debt, investors often assume they are backed by an implicit government guarantee. By the end of 2022, LGFVs had approximately 13.5 trillion renminbi, 2.1 trillion US dollars, of outstanding onshore debt, representing approximately 40% of China's non-financial corporate bond market. Much of this debt is held by domestic investors, from commercial banks to insurance companies and mutual funds, which means that any problems in the sector could ripple through the entire financial ecosystem. Despite these concerns, the market is not panicking. Earlier this year, key spreads between RMB-denominated local government finance platform bonds and similar maturity sovereign debt even narrowed. This is partly because even troubled regions seem to be prioritizing timely bond payments. However, investors continue to expect the central government to take some policy measures in the event of a debt crisis. Possible interventions could include the creation of a debt service fund to provide liquidity to weaker platforms, or the expansion of financing channels through state-owned enterprises. Most investors fundamentally believe that the central government will intervene to prevent systemic risk or damage to social and economic stability. Overall, investors are becoming increasingly wary of China's local government financing platforms, reflecting concerns about looming refinancing challenges and the potential impact on an already struggling economy. Investors are demanding shorter maturities and higher returns, suggesting a more challenging financing environment, particularly in weaker regions. While there is no panic in the market yet, investors expect the central government to take policy measures in the event of a debt crisis. The high level of local government finance platform debt held by domestic investors also raises concerns about potential knock-on effects throughout the financial system. This is China Briefing. Biden imposes record number of sanctions, controls on China, prompting complaints from Chinese officials. Bloomberg reports that President Joe Biden has taken more actions to challenge China than any previous administration according to a U.S. State Department official. The official said the Biden administration has imposed a record number of sanctions, 
export controls and competitive actions against China since taking office. These actions have been so tough that Chinese officials have repeatedly complained. The comments came in response to criticism from members of the Republican-controlled House Foreign Affairs Committee, who accused the administration of being weak in the face of Chinese aggression. The tough stance on China is also reflected in the rhetoric of Republican contenders in the 2024 presidential race. At the same time, the Biden administration is trying to stabilize relations with China through high-level visits by senior officials. The State Department officials' comments underscore the Biden administration's efforts to take a hard line with China. Since taking office, the official said, the administration has imposed a record number of sanctions, export controls and competitive actions against China. These actions have been so tough that Chinese officials have repeatedly complained. This shows that the Biden administration is not backing down in its efforts to challenge China. The comments were in response to criticism from members of the Republican-controlled House Foreign Affairs Committee. The chairman of the committee accused the State Department of being weak in the face of Chinese aggression and issued a subpoena to Secretary of State Anthony Blinken for documents related to the administration's actions against China. These criticisms reflect an increasingly bipartisan position on China. The hard line on China is also reflected in the rhetoric of Republican contenders in the 2024 presidential race. Some candidates have advocated stripping China of its permanent normal trade relations NTR, status. This suggests that the China issue will remain a major focus of U.S. politics in the coming years. At the same time, the Biden administration is trying to stabilize relations with China through high-level visits by senior officials. Secretary of State Antony Blinken visited Beijing in June, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen visited China over the weekend, and U.S. Climate Envoy John Kerry will visit China soon. The purpose of these visits is to engage in dialogue and identify areas of cooperation with China on issues such as climate change and economic relations. Overall, the comments from State Department officials underscore the Biden administration's efforts to challenge China and take a hard line with the country. The U.S. government has imposed a record number of sanctions, export controls, and competitive actions against China, prompting complaints from Chinese officials. However, the U.S. government has also sought to stabilize relations with China through high-level visits by senior officials, and comments by Republican contenders in the 2024 presidential race reflecting a hard line on China suggest that the China issue will continue to be a major focus of U.S. politics. This is China Briefing. Durian, a popular gift and a symbol of China's identity. The South China Morning Post reports that durian, a tropical fruit from Southeast Asia, is becoming increasingly popular in China, especially in rural areas. Traditionally, people in rural China give gifts such as grapes, ham sausages, milk and dried mushrooms for engagements and weddings. However, durian is preferred because of its nutritional value and fashionable status. China's imports of durians and other tropical fruits have increased significantly, thanks to lower taxes and simplified customs procedures under the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement, or SEPA. The durian is now a popular item among young people in small towns, appearing in a variety of foods such as sandwich cakes and lattes. Chinese investors are also entering the market, from contracting orchards in Southeast Asian countries to setting up cold chain logistics services and e-commerce platforms. Since 2017, China's imports of fresh durian have quadrupled, totaling more than 4 billion US dollars. In the first quarter of 2023 alone, durian imports have surged by more than 150 percent. As a result of the increase in imports and the start of the peak shipping season in Southeast Asia, durian prices in China have dropped significantly, making the fruit more affordable. Retail prices in wholesale markets across China ranged from 36 renminbi to 52 renminbi per kilogram. 
The increased popularity of the durian has also had an impact on cultural practices, with local bachelors now giving the durian as a gift instead of the traditional fruit and wine. The accessibility and speedy delivery of imported durians to all parts of China has contributed to the expansion of the market. However, China is also attempting to produce its own durians in Hainan province, although prices for domestically grown durians remain high. Here's the China briefing. Musk spoke to officials about AI regulation during his recent visit to China. Reuters reports that Elon Musk said China is interested in a cooperative international framework for artificial intelligence, AI, regulation. Musk made the remarks during a Twitter space event with two U.S. congressmen, Ro Khanna and Mike Gallagher. He mentioned that during his recent visit to China, he had a conversation with officials about AI regulations and oversight. Musk's comments came on the same day he launched his AI startup XAI, following concerns about the potential destructive power of AI. Musk previously visited China, where Tesla has a factory in Shanghai, and met with a number of government officials, including China's foreign minister, commerce minister and industry minister, as well as Vice Premier Ding. After the visit, Musk said that the Chinese government will initiate artificial intelligence regulations in the country. Governments around the world are currently exploring ways to mitigate the risks associated with AI, which has experienced significant investment and consumer interest in recent months. Regulators are working to establish rules for the use of generative AI, which creates text and images and compares it to the impact of the Internet. Mask's comments demonstrate China's willingness to cooperate on international AI regulation, showing a willingness to address the potential risks and challenges associated with the technology. Stay up to date on the latest news, analysis and policy briefings related to China from around the world with China Briefing. The Six Degrees Team aggregates, synthesizes and summarizes the most important information from a variety of sources, including the media think tanks, government agencies, and industry experts. Our mission is to provide you with easily accessible and valuable information that is tailored to your specific areas of interest. We understand the importance of keeping up to date with the latest developments related to China and aim to make this information accessible to our readers. Please subscribe to China Brief at 6dobrief.com and you can receive China Brief by email anywhere in the world.